Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray about the condition and the direction of our nation in our world. We want to continue to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. And lastly, our brothers and sisters everywhere around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We are just so, so excited about the potential and the possibilities of 2024. God, we pray for our nation and our world. We pray for a great door of utterance to be opened up to the apostolic church worldwide. And we'll give you the praise and the glory for that. We pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church members in particular. We pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your favor upon this congregation. God, we also pray for our brothers and sisters around the world, regardless of where they are, whatever situations they find themselves in. We pray that you'll provide each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. I really felt like this was just kind of dropped in my heart here just a few minutes ago, so we're going to talk about some very important things. Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 8, familiar passage of Scripture, Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. There's a lot that's covering a lot of, a lot of stuff right there. All good, all positive. I want to talk to us about compartmentalization and assignment. I know that that sounds really unusual given our text here, but just, just trust me here for a few moments. Compartmentalization and assignment. If I understand anything about Philippians, it's part of a corpus of information, Holy Ghost inspired information given to the church from a jail cell. The book of Philippians was written from a jail cell. It's one of the epistles that originated from a jail cell. And you're thinking, okay, you've got, you don't have any guarantees about the outcome of what's going to take place. You've got the environmental concerns and considerations that are taking place um, of being in chains. <clears throat> and yet you're able to come up with incredible, being used incredibly of God to continue to be used to put some of this down for our benefit and millions of people that have been beneficiaries of God using the Apostle Paul, regardless of where he was, conflict, I mean, he was the one that said that God may deliver us from unreasonable men, whether it was Demetrius or whether it was um, Alexander the coppersmith, Hymenaeus and Philetus. I mean, there are just so many. 
And then he had, as I've already mentioned, environmental considerations. Maybe he's in jail. Maybe he's, he's being resisted on various levels, but still being used of God. And here, this is a famous passage of Scripture, one that we are all acquainted with. So I want to talk to us, um, with all of that as a backdrop, I want to talk to us a little bit about compartmentalization and assignment because if you're, if you're going to survive, I mean survive, but I also mean if you're going to thrive, not just exist, not just get by, but if you're if you're going to be an overcomer, if you're going to be a victor in this spiritual walk, in this hour, in this life, you probably have already discovered to a certain degree or another compartmentalization and assignment. First of all, I want to say that this that's found here in Philippians chapter number four is not just some spiritual psychology or some random suggestion. This is a reality. But it is a reality that is going to take some choices. Like you're going to have to, it's, it's like in Romans 8, 14, uh, they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And, and then once I'm being led of the Spirit of God, I have to make some choices. I have to, I have to allow the Spirit of God to influence what I'm thinking and what I'm dealing with and what I'm quote-unquote going with. And, and maybe there's people involved and and how do I respond this way? And how do I deal with this? And how do uh, there's a, a multiplicity and a myriad of situations? But I want to tell you that God is big enough. God has the answer. Always, God has the answer. So what do I mean when I talk about compartmentalization and assignment? Okay, so. This scripture has been a strength to me for many years now. And I can immediately I can immediately make a choice and end up here. I can immediately make a choice and think about good things. If there's anything that's lovely, anything that's of a good report, if there's any praise, that that we now have this as a goal for our power of choice. I don't have to get bitter. I don't have to get ugly. I don't have to, I don't have to respond negatively. I don't have to have these horrible feelings. I don't, you're probably going to deal with all that. It's all part of the human dynamic. But now this, I have a choice now. How does somebody walk into a room that is dealing with this, dealing with this? And I'm, I'm, I know that I have the benefit of coming to this, uh, this devotional this morning as a pastor because it's helped me to discover some of these things and to exercise these things. But let me remove myself because I don't want to talk about myself anyway. But just yourself, you walk into a room, you have a, a wife, you have children, and you're, you've got this going on and this is going on. And you've got this concern and this consideration and this. How do I get to the place where this, this beautiful, wonderful scripture that says, think on these things. It's well within my power to do this. It's well within my ability through being born again of water and spirit and being repentant of my sins, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, this, this, is now, this is now a possibility if I'll make the right choice. But how do I juggle with all this? And how do I deal with all this? And still, if there's any praise, if there's anything that's lovely, anything of a good report, compartmentalization, and assignment. What do I mean by that? Compartmentalization means that what you're going through, 
what you're dealing with, situations, relationships, choices, responsibilities, all these things have to be put in their proper place. Like if I'm dealing with something that's really negative and, and, and I have to make sure that I put that in the right compartment, okay? Like I'm going to stick it into a compartment, call it a cubbyhole, call it your drawer, call it where, wherever you want to put that. But I'm not going to let that influence everything. I have to put it in its proper compartment. That's what I mean by compartmentalization. The Holy Ghost does this. I, I'd love to use the word automatically, but I'm sure there's a far more supernaturally organic word. I just can't think of it right now. But when you get in the Holy Ghost, things that appeared to be monsters and things that appeared to be insurmountable and things that appeared to be, I'm not going to make it. And things that appeared to be, I can't get through it. I can't get over it. I can't get around it. It is amazing that if you will get into the Holy Ghost, it's amazing that God is able to put this over here, put this over here, put this over here, put this over here. And it's, I'm not going to let that or those things influence this. I've got this person in front of me. I have you in front of me. I'm not going to let that, even though I got to deal with it, I'm not going to let that influence this. God, the Holy Ghost, is a master at compartmentalization. And I can tell you as a pastor that the only way that you can develop this more keenly and more effectively is to allow yourself to go through things that you don't want to go through. You have to come to the place of making a choice. I'm going to think on these things, not these things. So that's compartmentalization. But what is assignment? Assignment means that once that that is compartmentalized, I have also assigned whatever feelings, whatever, and, and that's a big word, when I talk about feelings, because some things can be situations that provoke us to anger, can provoke some type of emotion or thinking or thoughts. Anger is probably a good one because it's one of the strongest of the human emotions. But not only do I compartmentalize, compartmentalize but I assign the proper amount of response to each and every one of those little compartments that I am currently dealing with. I'm going to tell you that the more effectively that you walk in the Holy Ghost and the more that you choose the Word of God to govern your thought patterns, your, your emoting, your, your inner life, your outer response and reactions if need be, but more response the more that you're going to find that you have properly compartmentalized things. Even those things in your memory, that you may, you may pull it out because it's brought up, or you may pull it out because now it's become a resource for you, but you still don't relive it. You've, you've, you've allowed it. You've allowed it to be properly assigned. And there are some people that, that are not good with multitasking. And so they have to go through things one thing at a time. That's okay. If you're, if, you're, if you're a person and you're going through things one thing at a time, that is perfectly fine as long as you get through it. And as long as you let the Word of God and the Spirit of God navigate you through it to where you don't backslide, you don't lose your spiritual dignity, you don't attack another person's spiritual character. You go through it successfully. You're able to compartmentalize it, and you're able to assign it the proper amount of response, emotionally, mentally, physically, verbally, spiritually, everything. 
As someone that's been pastoring almost 30 years, I will tell you that this is going on all the time. And people get better at this as life happens. Sometimes when people are just getting started out in their Christian walk, Pastor, I'm really going through this. You can't minimize that because they're just learning this. They're going into this to where they're building up a life of experiences and and things are going to get compartmentalized and things are going to get put away. You want to make sure that it's without bitterness. You have to you want to make sure that that hurt has been healed and those wounds have been have been properly taken care of of God and you you put them away and that is building up your library of experiences and victories because you have become now a bigger person. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.